To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Let's look at the second concept. The next quantitative level that we are going to learn is the reorder quantity. Now, what do we mean by reorder quantity? See, whenever we reach the reorder level, then we said we are going to place an order. Now, the question is, when we reach the reorder level and we want to place an order, for how many units are we going to place the order? Are we going to place it for 100 units, 200 units, 20,000 units, 1 lakh units? For how many units are we going to place an order? So, the order size, the number of units for which we are going to place an order is called as the reorder quantity. Now, we have to learn how are we going to calculate this reorder quantity. So, for the purpose of identifying and calculating what is this reorder quantity, we calculate something called as economic order quantity or more popularly known as EOQ. Now, the entire fundamental base, the entire logic behind this EOQ calculation is that, look, whenever we set the reorder quantity, we should keep, you know, certain fundamental things in mind. We have to keep in mind the time that the, you know, supplier takes to deliver the material, that is the lead time. We will have to keep in mind the amount of money that we will have to spend on maintaining an inventory. Definitely, there will be some carrying cost, some insurance cost, some storage cost. So, what is the cost of carrying that inventory? We will have to keep in mind, if we go stock out, what is going to be the consequence? So, we will have to bear all such, you know, parameters in mind and then we will have to arrive at an economic order quantity. Now, as a thumb rule, in the calculation of economic order quantity, we are going to say the quantity, the order size should be such where the total cost of purchase, that is in terms of ordering cost and carrying cost is minimum. Now, what is ordering cost? The cost of placing an order. Every time we want to place an order, what is the cost that we are going to incur? That cost is called as the purchase cost. And once we, you know, order the material, once we receive the material, then we will have to store this material. We will have to carry this material. For the purpose of storing and carrying this material, we will not only need some warehouse, we will also need money that has to be invested in holding that stock. So, we will have to compute what is the carrying cost. The point at which the ordering cost and carrying cost can be minimized, that is to say, the total cost of placing an order and holding that order can be minimized. We are going to say we will order only that amount of units. We will order only for that quantity. This is known as the economic order quantity. Now, let's take a very small example in order to understand what we are talking about. What exactly is this ordering cost? What exactly is this carrying cost? And then how EOQ can be computed. So, let's say there is a requirement of materials per annum of 10,000 kgs. So, the annual consumption requirement is 10,000 kgs. The cost of placing an order, every time you place an order, let us say we are going to incur 50 rupees. Let's also assume the cost per kg is rupees 2. Alright. Then, let's assume the cost of carrying the inventory. So, which includes, you know, all your storage, insurance, uh, handling, etc. comes to 8% per annum. So, what are the four terms that we are referring to? The annual requirement is 10,000 kgs. The cost of placing an order is 50 rupees. The purchase price per order is rupees 2 per kg. And the cost of carrying the inventory is 8%. Now, let us, you know, draw a table. Let's, you know, take several scenarios and let's try to understand what is the cost of purchase, what is the cost of ordering, what is the cost of carrying and what is the cost of, uh, you know, the total inventory in uh, several situations. So, let's say we draw a table in which we indicate certain columns. One column for the number of orders that we are placing, second column for the order size. So, depending upon the number of orders that we place, we will decide the order size. Then third, let's indicate what is the average inventory we are going to hold. You know, we place an order for 1000 units. Are we going to hold this 1000 units throughout the entire period? The answer to that question is no. Maybe when we receive the material, on that day we will have the entire 1000 units. But as the time passes, as we start consuming, the inventory goes on reducing. So maybe, you know, on the day we receive the material, we will have the peak of 1000, but eventually it has to become zero sometime. Only then we are going to place next order. So we will always indicate average inventory because those are the number of units that we are going to hold on an average. And only for those average number of units, I am going to incur the carrying cost. So in the third column, we will indicate average, which is going to be nothing but zero 
plus the number of units for which we are going to place an order by 2. We are going to you know take the maximum peak, we are going to take 0 and we are going to take average. Then let's indicate what is the cost of purchase, the basic uh, you know amount that we will have to pay for buying the material. Then in the next column we'll indicate what is the ordering cost. Let us say if we decide to place one order, then the ordering cost will be one order into 50 that is 50 rupees. And then in the next column let's indicate the carrying cost, how much money I have to spend in order to hold that average inventory which we calculated. And in the last column let's indicate the total cost which will be the summation of your purchase cost plus ordering cost and the carrying cost. Alright, so let's start with the first situation. So what is the total requirement that we have? The annual requirement that we have is how many kgs? 10,000 kgs. Let us say we decide to buy the entire 10,000 kgs on day one. We decide to buy the entire 10,000 kgs on day one. So how many orders you are going to place? We are going to place only one order. So let's assume that we are placing only one order. Then let's see how the calculation turns out. So when we place one order, the order size is going to be how many units? 10,000 kgs. The average inventory will become 10,000 plus 0 by 2 that is 5,000 kgs. Alright, now what is going to be the cost of purchase? Now these 10,000 kgs we are going to buy at what cost? We are going to buy at rupees 2 per kg. So the cost will be 20,000 rupees for purchase. This is the basic cost. Then let's talk about the ordering cost. How many orders are we placing? We are placing only one order. So the ordering cost is going to be 1 into 50 that is 50 rupees. Now let's come to the important aspect which is the carrying cost. Now carrying cost is always calculated on the average inventory. What is the average inventory that we are holding? The average inventory that we are holding is only 5000 kgs because on the day we receive the order we will have 10,000. We will start consuming and gradually it will become zero. So if I have to take the average 10,000 plus zero by two that is 5000. Now these 5000 units I am going to hold let us understand how much amount of money I will have to spend in order to carry this inventory. Alright, now for 5000 units, what is the investment that I will have to do in order to buy this inventory? We are buying inventory at rupees 2 per kg. That means 5000 into 2, 10,000 rupees will get invested in buying that average inventory. Now what will be my cost of capital? We are saying 8%, let's consider it as the cost of carrying. That means for 10,000 worth of rupees stock into 8%, 800 is going to be my cost of carrying. Now let's indicate the total cost. Total cost is going to be 20,000 the cost of buying the material plus 50 rupees the cost of ordering the material plus 800 rupees the cost of carrying the material. Total cost comes to 20,850. Now the concept of economic order quantity what it talks about is it talks about placing those many number of orders and in such a quantity that means the order size should be in such quantity that the total cost of ordering plus carrying including the purchase cost gets minimized. We will have to find out what is that optimum level at which the cost is going to be minimized. Alright, so let's go on a journey. Let's you know start increasing the number of orders, start reducing the order size and let's see how the numbers turn out. Let's say instead of one order, we place two orders. Now what will be the numbers then? Sir, our total annual requirement is 10,000 kgs. If I order it equally in two lots, then each lot I will be buying how many kgs? I will be buying 5,000 kgs. So now my order size is going to become 5,000 kgs and the average inventory that I will be holding on day one I will have 5,000. We will start consuming, it will become zero. On that day again I will receive 5,000 and then I will start consuming. So between, so within a period if I talk about the average inventory, the average is going to be 5,000 plus zero divided by two, that is 2,500. What is going to be the cost of purchase? The cost of purchase is going to be 10,000 kgs because we are going to buy the entire lot, entire requirement, annual requirement of 10,000 kgs, just that we are going to buy it in two lots. So 10,000 kgs into rupees 2, 20,000 will remain as it is. Let's come to the cost of ordering. Now here how many orders we have placed? We have placed two orders. So two orders into 50, the ordering cost will become 100. 
and lastly the carrying cost now here the average inventory that we are holding is 2500 kgs so we will do 2500 kgs into 2 rupees i have invested in every kg into 8% that comes to rupees 400 so the total cost here becomes 20000 purchase cost 100 rupees ordering cost plus 400 rupees of carrying cost total is 20500 let's say we increase the number of orders and we now place three orders the total annual requirement whatever we are having we are going to buy it in three lots so the number of orders are three what will be the size of the order the order size the number of kgs that we are going to order uh, you know every time we place an order so it will be 10,000 by 3 which comes to 3,333.33 for the sake of convenience let me round it off to a higher number 3,334 so let's say we place an order for 3,334 kgs every time what will be the average inventory? The average inventory will be 3334 divided by 2 which is 1667. Now the purchase cost is going to remain same because 10,000 kgs we are going to buy throughout the year. Only thing is we are going to buy it in 3 lots. The cost per kg is rupees 2. So we will buy, uh, you know, so we will pay 20,000 rupees to buy that inventory. Then the ordering cost will now be 50 rupees into 3 orders that is 150 and coming to the carrying cost it will be 1667 kgs which we are holding as an average into rupees 2 per kg into 8% so it comes to rupees 266.64 or let's just round it off 267 so the total cost of uh, you know buying the material plus ordering plus carrying comes to 20,000 plus uh, 150 rupees for ordering plus 267 rupees for carrying that is 20,417. So let's now further increase the number of orders to 4. So when we place 4 orders, the order size is going to be 10,000 units the annual requirement divided by 4 that is 2,500 units. And the average inventory will now become 2,500 by 2 that is 1,250. Alright. Now, what will be the purchase cost? The purchase cost, the basic purchase cost is still going to remain at 20,000 rupees. In terms of ordering, now we are placing 4 orders. So 4 into 50 will give us 200 rupees. Let's look at the carrying cost. Now the order size that we have is 2,500 and we say when we receive the order we will have 2,500. As we go on consuming, eventually we will go to zero. The average inventory is 1,250. The ordering cost will be 1,250 units into 2 rupees that we have invested in that into 8%. So that comes to rupees 200. Now if we add up the total of the basic cost plus the ordering cost plus carrying cost comes to rupees 20,400. Now if you carefully observe, as we go on increasing the number of orders and we you know reduce the order size, the cost, the total cost is coming down. The idea of economic order quantity is to find out that optimum level where the total cost of ordering plus carrying plus the basic is the least. That point where we have the optimum cost, that is to say the least amount of cost is called as the economic order quantity. Now let's just you know go further, let's increase the number of orders to 5. When we increase the number of orders to 5, the order size will be 10,000 divided by 5, 2,000 units. The average inventory will become 2,000 by 2, 1,000 units. The total purchase cost will remain uh, you know at 20,000. In terms of ordering cost, the ordering cost will be 5 orders into 50, 250 and the carrying cost will be 1,000 into 2 into 8 percent which will be 160 rupees. Now the total cost comes to 20,410. What has happened? At the previous step when we were placing only 4 orders and when the order size was 2500 my total cost was how much? 20,400 rupees. But when we increased the number of orders and reduced the order size the cost became 20,000 410. Now the cost has all of a sudden increased. It is an indication that look if we now further increase the number of orders the cost will just increase. It is better that we don't you know increase the number of orders further. Maybe at the previous step the number of units that we have is the optimum and maybe that is the level at which we should uh, you know 
we uh, stop ourselves and place the order only for those number of units. So this entire exercise of finding out what is that point, what is the number of units, how many orders we should place so that the total cost is uh, you know uh, kept at the bare minimum, it is kept at optimum is called as finding out the economic order quantity. Now friends, if you ask me sir, do you have a guarantee that at this 2500 units we have 20,400, there is no other point at which we can you know further optimize the cost. I can say okay, per se I cannot say because this is just a trial error, but there is a mathematical formula which we can use in order to compute the you know economic order quantity. This mathematical formula has been tried and tested and you know it has been uh, proven it's more like a theorem that has been uh, you know derived and so we can rely on that formula that is my guarantee so which formula are we talking about the formula that we can use for calculating the economic order quantity is very very simple it is nothing but under root 2ao by c sir what is this 2ao by c from where did these terms come very very simple a here refers to the annual requirement what is the annual requirement that we are having? We are having an annual requirement of 10,000 kgs. So 2 in this under root 2 AO by C represents the annual requirement. What is O? O is nothing but the ordering cost per order. Now the ordering cost per order that we have here is how much? Rupees 50 per order. So O is that 50 per order. And then what is C? C is nothing but carrying cost per unit per annum. Now, how can we calculate this carrying cost per unit per annum? Very, very simple. The cost of buying or purchasing one unit is how much? It is rupees 2. So, if I buy one unit and keep it in stock for the entire year, what is going to be my carrying cost per unit per annum? It is going to be 2 into 8%, which is 0 0.16, 16 paisa per unit per annum. So, carrying cost per unit per annum is 0. 1, 6. It is basically the cost of buying one unit into the you know cost of holding that inventory, cost of carrying whatever the question indicates. In this question it is 8%, in this example it is 8%, so 2 into 8% 0 0.16. Now if we simply you know plug in these numbers in the formula, it is going to give us the economic order quantity. Let's just see. So EOQ is equals to under root 2AO by C. Let's substitute the numbers. So that will be under root 2 into 10,000 into 50 divided by 0 0.16. So if we multiply, we get 2,500 units. That means the economic order quantity is 2,500 units. At this order size, we are going to have the least amount of cost. The cost is going to be the optimum. All right. But sir, the EOQ, economic order quantity is 2500. How many orders do we have to place? We will have to compute the number of orders that have to be placed. This total requirement annually 10,000 divided by 2500 units we are placing in every order. That means 10,000 divided by 2500, we will have to place 4 orders. So that is how the number of orders can be calculated. Sir, what is the total ordering cost at this point? Very, very simple. 4 orders into 50, 200 rupees. Sir, what is going to be our carrying cost? Okay, 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 carrying cost. 2500 is the order size. At a given point when I receive goods, I will have 2500. But as we consume, it will keep going down. Eventually, it will become zero. So when we take the average, it will be 2500 plus zero by two, one, two, five, zero. So we will have 1250 units on an average with us at any given point of time into two rupees into 8% or simply you can say 1 to 5 0 units into 0 0.16 per unit. So that will give you the carrying cost of rupees 200. So the total cost will be 200 for ordering, 200 for carrying 400 plus 20,000 the basic cost that will be 20,400. So this is how we can compute the economic order quantity. So to summarize, reorder quantity is the number of units, it is the order size you know that we are going to place whenever we reach the reorder level. Whenever we reach a level where order has to be placed, we are going to place an order for the reorder quantity. It is calculated using the economic order quantity formula which is under root 2AO by C where A is the annual requirement 
uh, you know of the number of units o is the ordering cost per order and c is the carrying cost per unit per annum 